Hey guys, welcome back to live stream tonight. So we are talking about solar power. Um, we're going to be adding an additional 200 watts of solar to Thomas's van. Um, we're going to go over the reasons why we're doing that. And then we're also going to talk about uh, the layout and the products that I bought to make it happen. Uh, how we're going to integrate it into the system we currently have. And uh, we won't physically be installing it today, but we're going to go through all the parts behind me that you're gonna need if you want to add additional solar to your system. Uh, we're gonna briefly talk about the reasons why you would want to separate different wattage panels um, instead of integrating, say, 175 watt solar panel with these 50 watt solar panels. So we'll talk briefly about that. Um, I'll give you a couple of links to uh, two YouTube videos that are really help helpful, well, two channels actually. Um, that have really helped me uh, understand everything. But right now we're gonna take a second. I'm going to double check this microphone. Um, I didn't turn it on before we got started, so. <laughs> anyway, if you guys have questions, put those in the comments below. Um, we'll, get on, we'll get on those tonight. And uh, as usual, ask me anything in the chat van related and we'll, we'll put it, um, as soon as those questions come through, we'll get right to them. But yeah, we're going to pause just for a second. I'm going to double check this mic and then we'll hop on to the table over there. Hop over to the table and kind of get started with the stream tonight. All right, Jamie, give me a thumbs up if you can hear that audio come through. We're on the lapel microphone. There we go. All right, just going to wait just a couple more minutes, let some more people get in the chat, and then we will kick it off. Playing from Nicholas's iPhone. This is iPhone. There we go.
Okay, I think our audio is all set for this evening. Awesome, guys. Cool. We've got a couple people in the live stream now, so we'll go ahead and get started. So what I've done is I've laid out the products for installing 200 additional watts to Marine One, which is the van that we've been working on for Thomas. And the reason that we decided to add more solar was we could have gone two ways. We could have added more DC to DC charging uh, straight from the engine battery, bumped it up from like 30 amps to 60 amps safely. Um, the thing is, the van is not driven every single day. It's not a full-time live-in van. Uh, it's for traveling and adventure, so sometimes it might sit in the driveway for a couple days, maybe a week or two. So what we wanna do is, we still wanna have it ready to go. So for example, say you went on a trip for a week and you wanted to uh, kind of load up some bottles of water and stuff like that in the fridge and you're leaving the next day or something like that. Um, we want a system to where we can maximize solar to top off those batteries so that when you're ready to go, everything's at 100% and you can head out. But also your fridge, for example, could be pre-chilled um, so you don't have to wait for it to get cold while you're on the road. You can go ahead and just start your trip. So since that was our case, we moved from adding a additional DC to DC charger and we went to more solar. So this is kind of where we landed. And I'm gonna switch over to the other camera here in just a second. And I'm gonna to talk to you about what products are on the table. And then we're gonna come back to the computer. We'll go over here and we'll have some fun on I need to add the uh, I need to add the audio over here. One second. There we go. Okay. So you guys should be able to hear me. So we'll go over to Amazon and we're gonna go through a couple products. Uh, there's some three products that I'm gonna be adding to this um, that I needed to change once I had this layout over here. So we'll go to this and then we'll uh, complete the stream by going over the questions that are in the comments on the YouTube channel. We had a bunch last week, so I wanna just go through those, answer those uh, while I'm on the live stream in case you guys are actually watching. You can interact with those answers to the questions. But yeah, let's hop over here and start talking about what we have. All right, okay, so we're over here on the table. Now, the photo, let me get the photo shut up, that way you guys can actually see what this is supposed to look like. So give me two seconds, I will pull up an overhead view. You might've saw it on the thumbnail before coming over here, um, but I'm just gonna go pull it, pull it up again. All right, so check this out. This is the top of Thomas's van. Right now we have two 175 watt Renogy panels up here. And what we're gonna do is on the left and right hand side or driver's and passenger side of the max fans, we're gonna add 50 watts each. So 50 on the driver's side, passengers, driver, passengers. So we'll have four up there. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there, there will be no more room for uh, any more solar up there, but we're gonna max it out. Um, that way we can really keep everything nice and topped off. So coming back over to the table, we've gone with four 50 watt panels. You guys saw the layout on the roof. Now, the reason that you want to select a separate system for an additional system has to do with 
the efficiency of the solar panels. For example, if you have 172, 175 watt solar panels, those have a different voltage than the voltage of these lower wattage panels. And it's just a rule of thumb to not mix different voltages together. Uh, if you do that, it decreases the efficiency significantly, uh, regardless if you wire these in series or parallel. And those links to those other videos, um, they, those two channels go into great depths, um, good detail with uh, schematics and everything, and it's just a, a great place for me to send you guys. Um, we'll talk about these products on Amazon so that if you wanted to purchase them, we'll show you the links. So we got our panels. The next thing we need to do is we need to get some connectors to connect them all together. Because remember, we're not connecting this to the current solar system. Uh, that act like this is just a different van. So it's a completely independent system. So the first thing we want to do is I went to uh, Renogy and I, when I do, when I build vans, I love this kit that they have. They have these uh, ready to go solar panel install kits. Um, they come with the connectors here. They come with the panel, the actual angle that uh, bolts to the panel. And then you can bolt this to whatever roof rack system you're using. And then it also gives you battery terminal cables so that once you come from the panels into your solar charge controller, which today we have the uh, Rover Elite, and this is the 20 amp version. It's an MPPT controller. So it's not a PWM, MPPT. And what we do with, the reason I got this is, uh, it's just a really good value. This thing is about $109. And if you bought a Victron equivalent, um, you're around 200 plus dollars. So this one's gonna do the job. Uh, the rating of the panels and this unit uh, marry really well together. So it's just a nice, uh, cost-effective system when you're trying to, to upgrade. So the cables come with that kit. They also come with the uh, branch adapters. So what we'll need to do is we'll be taking this panel and this panel, branch adapting them together. The same for these other two. And then we'll just take, we'll take the four lines and move them into just two. And then those two lines will go directly into our charge controller, and then it'll go into our, uh, well, before it gets to the charge controller, we're gonna put it through our breaker. This is a dual pole breaker. And this way we can uh, safely disconnect our solar uh, before it actually gets into our system. Um, solar is always on, so if you guys don't know if you've never done solar before, these panels right now are actually producing electricity. One tip that I like to uh, tell everyone is keep your boxes until you're done with your project. Because you can take your box, for example, like when I'm working on this, and you can cover the panel, because it's obviously the same size. You can cover the panel and cut down the electricity I mean, pretty much to zero. It might be sneaking in on the side, but... Um, Yep, I just keep these and then when I'm done, I toss them. Uh, I typically work with 100 watts or 175 watts uh, panels. So, you know, 50, this is the first time I bought 50 because of our footprint that we're working with. But anyway, this box you can buy from Renogy. We'll go over this in the Amazon uh, link here in just a second, show you what comes with it. Uh, but I got two of these. Each one comes with two branch adapters, so we'll be able to do all four panels. Uh, we do have an inline fuse for our solar. Now, I haven't got these in. These are not the exact ones I'm gonna be using for this project. Uh, they're just here kind of as a placeholder. So once we have our panels, cables, to our inline fuse, go into our breaker, we'll input it into our solar charge controller. And then from that, 
we'll put it into our Lynx distributor. Um, and then that way we can uh, put power into our system. And so uh, this week, later this week, we'll go into the van and we'll do that. Now this big thing right here, this is not necessary. You don't have to buy this. The reason I bought this one is, is literally to disconnect the negative side of the solar after the breaker. The reason we're doing this is the way that we had to lay this van out, and if you guys have been watching the live streams, <laughs> everything is so, so tight. There's, there's really no room to hardly do anything uh, with what we put in the van. So the electrical, there's not really any way to move anything because this was an afterthought as far as adding more solar. We didn't anticipate doing that. So what I'm doing is these, both of these breakers are gonna be located inside the battery system. Now that is behind the frosted acrylic, uh, piece of acrylic uh, that you guys saw in the van. It's pretty fancy. And uh, let me back up here. Yeah, more power, that's right. Getting more power. Um, okay, you guys can see on that. Wasn't sure which one was better. Let's see. That's actually not that bad. I'll do this one for right now. So, All right. So again, the reason that we're going with this one right here is because it matches what we have in the van already. So that way when we have our main disconnect for the power system, which goes to the lithium batteries, the next thing we'll have will be the solar disconnect. Uh, due to the fact that we have so much solar on this van, um, a lot of systems can just continuously, continuously be ran or powered uh, by the solar panels. Uh, so when we need to, uh, if I need Thomas to troubleshoot or cycle through the van, if he turns off the main disconnect um, and can't get to the breaker, we need a way to fully disconnect the solar. Um, so this is the way that we're going to do that, which by just disconnecting the uh, the negative wire through this circuit. Uh, so that's our layout. The next question would be, how are we going to mount this up on the uh, Flatline Vanco roof rack? So the way we're going to do it is we're going to be using uh, one inch aluminum tubing, and so we're going to take this aluminum tubing and we're going to undermount it underneath the uh, cross crossbars from the Flatline Vanco system. So I got a piece of uh, got an extra piece of the 8020 that is used. So let's go. Uh, let's pull it out under here. So if you guys are familiar with Flatline Vanco, this is the uh, piece of 8020 that they use. I believe it's a 10 series because it's one inch, um, but it's one inch by two inches. So this is what it is right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, so imagine these cross members are going like this in the van. So we're gonna take this and then we're going to take our, we're going to cut this so that it spans from this cross member to the next black cross member. And then we'll take it and we'll actually mount this underneath the cross member. 
uh, because we want the we want the visual aspect of this to be clean. So we want the panel to actually float flush with the cross member, um, and then that way it'll be you know hidden. It won't be showing high above the roof rack. And then the way we'll do that is the back of these, the reason I like these Renogy panels, most solar panels are like this. Um, I guess I am kind of a fanboy for Renogy. I just think it's a uh, good value. Um, I've used it for years and nothing's, you know, all good things have happened. All right, so here is the back of the solar panel. And I'm gonna go to their camera and zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And this next part is pretty much for someone who is a DIYer and has not done this before. <laughs> Cardboard aided design, I love the YouTube name. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's something that we'll have to. Uh, uh, it just kind of comes with the territory, you know. When the max fans are up, um, it's going to put a little bit of shadow on it. But when th when you think of solar, you you got to think uh, long spans of time. You got to think four, five, six hours of the day worth of power uh, range. Um, your immediate power is not what you're really looking for in solar. Um, but yeah, depending on the solar panels, yep, a slight angle, definitely. I mean, you guys will probably notice this over winter time. You know, the sun's at a lower angle in the sky and you know, it's less, uh, the, the panels are less effective. No, perfect thing to point out. All right, let me switch over here so I can zoom in. There we go. So we'll go here. All right. <laughs> there you go. Just, uh, you know, put the van on its side. That's hilarious. All right, so here's our panel. So this next section is for anybody new to solar panels and has no idea how to mount them. They just, they know I like Renogy or I, I picked one. It doesn't matter, rich solar. Um, doesn't matter which one you get. So you get a panel. It's, uh, I w would stay away from flexible solar panels uh, because the benefit you get with a aluminum frame designed solar panel is uh, convection. So when this panel is up on the roof rack, even if it's really low, you have this chamber in here where air can move and it can cool the back of the panel. Um, if you can imagine, you guys have, you know, you've washed your car, you've, you've, on a hot day, you put your hand on top of your car or truck or whatever. I mean, the sheet metal is so hot. I mean, you literally can burn yourself on it. So the efficiency of a solar panel has almost, uh, a significant portion of this efficiency is with heat. So heat reduces the efficiency of the solar panel. Um, solar panels, when it's cooler outside, so like the winter, uh, they do really well as far as efficiency goes because they can stay nice and cool. Um, and the sun is, you know, uh, Usually the skies are pretty clear. Let's just say, you know, like when it's, uh, when you're up in the mountains, it's very nice and cool. Um, but that, but by getting this, the non-flexible ones, 
you get a little bit, you get a much stronger frame. Uh, well, the flexible ones do not have a frame. Um, but then when you mount this, you should get that, you get the area to, for air to cool the back of this. Um, that's very important. So the back here, when you get a panel, typically they're going to be pre-drilled with a couple of holes. And if you buy this uh, Renogy kit, it's going to give you a little baggie, just like this. And this bag is going to have some uh, screws as well as some uh, uh, like sheet metal screws, style screws, and nuts, washers, bolts. So these nuts, washers, and bolts are to connect these brackets. Uh, now I, I buy a bunch of these and then I kind of chop them up to my liking. Um, I might remove the tabs or I might relocate these holes. And when I'm using like a Flatline Vanco rack, I'll actually come over here and I will, um, depending on where I want the panel to be, I will re-drill the holes so that this is like how I want it. So for example, if I'm putting it on the rail in this orientation, I can't use these two holes and uh, I need to re-drill some other holes. And I'll pause for a second because we got some stuff in the chat here. Let's see. Oh, no, we're, we're about the same. All right, keep on going. Let me get a little bit more light in here. All right, so we have these angle, these uh, brackets here. Now these brackets, they have a adjustable slot. And typically what you would do is you would take these fingers right here and these fingers would go on the outside of the panel. And I'm just gonna put a couple on so you guys can see different orientations. And again, if you have any questions, let's put those in the, put those in the comments. All right, so you're gonna take it, the little fingers go on the outside, so you can adjust if it's necessary. Um, but you can do it like this. This raises the panel off of the van. If you flip it over, that doesn't work. But if you flip it over, let's see here, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, you can change the orientation. So for this one, imagine you have this as your van roof. Uh, let's see. Make sure this is in the video. So say this is your van surface. If you put this down, it's gonna raise it up about, about a half inch. So we'll put that in that orientation just for the example here. So once you get the bracket in, you can see that it lifts it up. So this would be the van surface and this would raise it up. So what I did is, I'll, sh I'll show you an example of what I did with the other panels. Cause I know um, a lot of you guys have not seen that. So basically I take, imagine this is one of the 100 watt or 175 watt panels, like the bigger ones that I use. So I'll put these in these holes right here. And then I'll have my piece like that. And what's cool is, so check this out. This can go underneath this. So you can under sling this and actually let's flip this, let's flip this over. Here's our roof rack. So you can do two things. If you need some, say, say underneath here, you've got a bunch of uh, 
solar wires, like say, say you have some type of vent, maybe it's like a bathroom vent, or you have a cable gland right here. For some reason, the way you did it, it's above the rack mount. Well, if you change your feet this way, you can mount it on top. That fixes that issue. But, so the way we did on Thomas's is we actually under, actually, hold on, I'll, I'll give you an example of what we did. So see, now you can get it lower. And then what we did was we actually went even lower. So I'll see if I can do that. Yeah, be careful with these sharp edges because I already, I got myself and I'm not even working. So we'll take this and we'll flip the bracket over. So check this out. So all we did was flip it over. All right, so we just flipped it over. And so now when we put it on our cross member, this is exactly what we did with the van behind us, is now you've got it sitting down in the channel. So you're really close to being flush with your bars. Um, so that's gonna help with, uh, as, you, as you guys know, if you've got a big roof, roof rack, bunch of solar panels, you're not going to be stealthy, but I know people mention it. <laughs> this is, I guess, it's good, about as stealthy as you can get. Uh, I like this because the closer you can have it hug the van roof, remember, we still want that ventilation underneath here, but the closer you can get it down, uh, that helps with the wind that comes across it. Um, you can imagine if this is up high, you would have uh, you know some buffeting possibly. Anyway, the energy kit right here. This comes with all your hardware to you know out of the box to be ready to mount this. So I like it because I can just get the kit and I can start at work and I don't have to worry about what I'm doing. Now, what we're going to do on this one is I needed the kit. For these cables, for these branch adapters, um, and the battery terminal cables. So the only thing I'm not using in this kit are these. Now you probably wonder why am I not going to use it? Well because the theme of Marine One is there's no more room left to Put, put anything. So we have approximately a quarter of an inch on each side of this. So the max fan is in between these two on the roof. Um, here, I'm going to go to the photo. So right here, if you guys check out the photo, this is where we're putting the solar panels. And if I zoom in, uh, this right here, um, this is actually pushed up underneath the Flatland Vanco rack. And the rack is actually tapered. So, when I raise this, when I put this on the cross member, this will only be a quarter of an inch away from the max fan. So we got really lucky with Renegy making a footprint of this panel the way they did because um, and don't worry guys, I know you see these rusted screws up here. These were uh, black painted screws, and uh, yeah, we're going to replace them. So if you're watching, Thomas, don't worry. We're going to clean all this up. You know how we roll. So some, 
usually sometimes black oxide finishes are pretty good. Um, but you got to be careful when you order screws and stuff like that because the, it's hard to tell what quality a black screw is. Um, anyway, so we're going to replace those. Those are just more cosmetic, but anyway, so the same thing over here, what we'll do is we're going to run, let's, how, I wonder if I can, can I put, I'm going to see if I can put this in my drawing program so you guys can actually see how we're going to lay this out. That'd be cool if I could do that. All right, as I'm setting this up, um, let me know if you guys have any questions while I'm working on this. Yeah, so if you're looking at the roof, we're going to, I'm going to draw here on this pad and hopefully I can draw over this photo. I'll just, I'll just draw it. It'll be easier. Let's get to our drawing software. All right, you guys should be able to hear me. Okay. So let's get to a clean piece of paper. All right, we're going to draw the, uh, the top of the van. All right, and we have the, uh, the 175 watt panel up here at the front. Then we have one right here behind it. We have a max fan here. And then we got a max fan back here. Make my head just a little bit smaller. Okay, so this is our layout. So this is vent, fan. This is vent, fan. Okay, and then this one is 175 watt. 175 watt. So the new location is going to be here. If you guys were here earlier in the stream, you, we already talked about the layout with that photo. So this is where the new solar panels are going to go. Now, the mistake I made uh, with uh, the parts that I was ordering is I didn't order enough of my extensions because I got two of those uh, Renegy boxes. Okay. Now, two is fine for two big panels because you can, uh, let me change my color here, because you can take the two cables and then you can take the, uh, the branch, adapt, uh, branch connector and have one come out. You can take the two cables branch connector and have one cable come out. Well, I have four. And so I need to add a couple more things. So we're going to talk about that when we get to the, uh, the Amazon page where we, we check out. All right, so we have our four uh, up here. So right here, Uh, the solar panel is pretty much touching the Flatline Vanco roof rack, which is okay. We'll put a spacer in there, like a sixteenth of an inch or something like that, so when we bolt it down, it doesn't rub over time. Now, but this inside right here, we've got about a quarter of an inch. We've got plenty of room with the vent fan to open. And really, guys, that's all the room that we have. Uh, so that is the layout on the top of the roof. Um, so kind of jumping forward from the parts is how we're going to mount this. So if I can get the, that's a good, let's try purple. All right, so what we're gonna do, eh, no, I'm gonna use black because you can't see that. 
Um, okay. So hopefully you guys can see this. So what we're going to do is this is going to be our aluminum tubing. And so the aluminum tubing is going to connect. Panels are going to lay on that uh, or be bolted to that aluminum tubing. And then this right here is our cross member from Flatline Vanco. Cross member Flatline Vanco. Cross member. And then the back is a cross member. And that way, this section here will just be spanning that difference. And that's that one inch square aluminum tubing. You know, we just picked it up from Lowe's. Uh, and then what we'll do is back here behind me, we've got some hardware. And since our cross members on the roof are one inch and our tubing is one inch, we went with three inch uh, bolts. These are, uh, so these are hex bolts. Um, uh, you don't need socket head cap screw bolts or stuff like that. Uh, just a simple hex bolt, but you need to make sure it's stainless. Everything on the roof needs to be stainless. Um, or if it's extremely well painted, you can, you can get away with, you know, painting stuff like using Rust-Oleum black to paint it black, like for example, those uh, screws. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is when you're setting up how you're going to do this, you want to make sure that we're going to be drilling through this. And so the bolt is actually going to go through the channel here, out the bottom, and the aluminum is going to come up underneath. That way the panel sits above it and it's as, you know, it's as flush with the other panels as we can get. But what you want to do is you want to measure this gap right here. And you can take, you know, you can take a tape measure or whatever, but since I'm fancy, we got a, a caliper here. So we'll take a measurement here and uh, we've already, we've already measured this. Um, so this is 0.25, essentially this is a quarter inch slot, pretty standard on this uh, 8020. And we have quarter 20 bolts. So when we drill our hole straight through, it's gonna be nice and clean. You know, we're not gonna get into the sides here and make it, the, make it harder on ourselves. We're gonna bolt it, and then we're gonna come over to the uh, square tubing over here and we're going to um, again we're going to take this to this uh, aluminum tubing and I'm gonna make it orange and it's just gonna span that we're gonna cut it so it fits perfectly and then we're going to put our so this red circle is just our quarter 20 bolt so we're gonna bolt it in four places and then we'll actually drill in here and we'll, we'll screw the frame of, we'll screw the frame of the solar panel to the uh, one inch tubing. So we'll take our solar panel like this and then we'll take this. And so this right here will be right there. And the, the aluminum right here is one inch and this is one inch. So it's gonna be extremely strong. Uh, it's really kind of overkill, but um, this is, aluminum is very light. Dimensions and everything are perfect. So we're gonna do this and this panel is gonna lay on top of here. And that way when the van is taken off road and all kinds of crazy stuff, it's gonna be safe. It's gonna be safe driving at 80 miles an hour, all that good stuff. Um, all right, let's see what else I have to draw here. So if you guys have any questions right now about uh, roof layout, solar panel layout, we did this in a previous live stream where we talked about uh, is your van too heavy, you know, weight distribution. Um, these panels are not that heavy. If I go over to, uh, uh, let me just go over to the computer here. Uh, 
All right, so if we come over here to the computer, you can see that these 50 watt panels, they are uh, 7.72 pounds each. So it's not terribly heavy, not, not a lot of uh, weight they're adding. Um, but this is them, again, no affiliation with Renogy, just giving you guys quick access to uh, some good information. So this is the panel. Uh, again, you know, great price range as far as, you know, what it does. Now I'll show you the, the difference. Um, we are adding 200 watts, uh, and then we're expecting, uh, we get about 2.69 amps from it. However, the efficiency of solar panels are, if you have 50 watts, um, you're really closely getting into about 25 watts a panel. Um, so, but it has to say, it's the same thing with these, with the bigger panel that we put on. So this, uh, 175 watt panel. Now let's quickly, we're not going to talk detail about this. We'll probably save this for a different, uh, another live stream, but the difference is, uh, let's look at the specifications for a 175 watt panel. So what we have here is we've got a uh, short circuit current of 10.62 amps. Um, so the amps aren't that big of a deal because uh, we are, we have this in parallel. So we're going to be more concerned with the uh, keeping the voltage the same. So our voltage on this panel is 21.6 volts. And we have that times two uh, each, I mean, each of the 175 watt panel is 21.6 volts um, for the voltage. If we go to the 50, uh, let me click on the wrong thing. If we go to the 50 watt panel, hold on a second. Oh, that's a menu. Okay. We go from 21.6, and then if we go to the 50 watt panel, we go to uh, 22.3. Now, that's not a significant difference. However, uh, when it's in parallel, uh, it chooses the, uh, the lower common denominator. So whatever is the lowest is what uh, the charge control is going to go with. But again, it's, you're going to get your, the full, the, you're going to get the most efficiency if these are both separate, if the charge controller has, is separated. So it's only dedicated to a set voltage and current from each of the systems. Um, and, and really, you know, it's just an additional hundred bucks. Um, so I understand if you're on a budget, but you know, a hundred bucks just to make it easier uh, when you're dealing with different panels and getting better efficiency, I think it's worth it. Uh, the unit that we used, so the charge controller, we'll go over here, we're going to go to MPPT charge controllers, um, and they've got a bunch of them. Uh, you know, the, well, the Rover is like one of their popular ones, but again, we're dealing with space. Uh, there's a bunch of features on the Rover that we don't need. Um, so uh, I think it was like two years ago, they came out with the Rover series, or the Rover El uh, I'm sorry, the Rover Elite, and they got two options. They've got a 20 amp option, and they got a 40 amp, 40 amp option. So we're going to go with, we went with the 20 amp, and then, uh, you know, you can set it up with Bluetooth if, if you want to. Um, if we move on down, let's see here. I want to find out the max. Yep, yeah, here we go. So when you do get a charge controller, you're going to want to look at the max power input. Uh, and you want that to be at 12 volts. Uh, don't confuse it with 24 volts. So for 12 volt system, we got 260 watts. You know, we're only adding 200. So we're in a safe range for that.
Uh, okay, so that's the system that we got set up. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, uh, we're just kind of moving through through this. Put those in the chat. We'll keep on trucking. So the next part, I'm going to go over. Uh, I'm going to have two channels that I recommend checking out to understand um, the wiring of this. So for example, if we come over here to where we drew this, we have two systems. So we have uh, the 175 watt system that's coming together. So we have you know positive and negative off of this system. And then these are going into our uh, branch adapters. And then we're coming out with um, one positive and one negative. And so these are these are weird. <laughs> weird. These are wi wired in parallel. And then the next one we have, it, next one we'll have is uh, each of these in their own branch connector over here. And these will be a separate system, obviously. And so those will be put into a branch adapter kit. And then we'll have um, it'll actually be double, double branched. That way we can break it down one more time. Now you can find ones that are four. The branch adapters have four ends. Uh, but then you have to consider how you're getting from here to here to connect these panels. So you, uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about. Okay, I'll talk about. Put in the chat if you guys want to talk about how I organize solar panel cables. If you guys are interested in that, put that in the chat. Um, I'll, I'll I'll do a new drawing and I'll show you how I organized it. If you guys have questions. Uh, so essentially, we got two independent systems. So this will be system number one, and this will be system number two. And I'm not sure why I didn't mention this. The whole benefit of not wiring everything into one system is redundancy. So say, for example, for some reason, as bulletproof as a Red Arc system, uh, not sponsored, I just randomly wore this shirt tonight <laughs> for the live stream. But let's just say the, the Red Arc system uh, passed out, like it just stopped working. Um, you would lose your DC to DC system and or you would lose the solar charging MPPT controller that's built into the Manager 30. So with this, now you have 200 watts that is completely decoupled from the system and can continue to charge your van, charge your batteries, and then so you're not, um, uh, you know, you're not kind of stranded. Uh, for lack of a better word. Okay, so yeah, put that in the chat if you guys want to uh, see that. All right, let's hop back over here and let's talk about um, the additional components. And then we'll pretty much uh, end the stream here. So let me get this set up. Our cables. All right, so in addition to the Renogy box that we bought that had, all the, that had all the goodies in it, this one, there's a couple more cables that we're going to need. Uh, so we're going to need four of the five foot. These will bring our power from the two innermost. Uh, so it'll bring the power from here and here to the next panel. And then after our double branch adapters, or after our uh, branch adapters come in, we'll need 
um, this 10 foot to bring it in into the van because we're going to connect this directly and go through the van. So what I do is I use, I don't use a, uh, I don't cut a huge hole inside the van. I cut, I use a gl these glands. And then the way that I use them is if this is the solar wire coming into the van, these uh, gland fittings, they're kind of like a compression, uh, compression gland. What you do is you take this and then this goes, if you've never used this before, it goes in between the sheet metal of the van and the, and the so you got the top of the van, you got the sheet metal, and then you got the inside of the van. And there is a rubber O-ring that seals all the water out. Now, not only do I just, I use this O-ring, what I'll do is I'll use, uh, I'll put a lap sealant around here, and then we got a really secure double seal. But then I put this in the van, and then what I'll do is I'll feed in this wire through the gland like that and then I'll have one of these for my positive and I'll have one of these for my negative the way the reason I do that is you're cutting smaller holes in the van and there may be more but what you're able to do is let's just say some weird thing like a branch caught this and it, it ripped the wire out well if this was in a big gland on the roof with all the wires coming into the van that might rip the whole thing off and so instead of having a problem with one wire you're going to have a you're going to have a problem with uh you know five six wires so with this you can troubleshoot it much easier by just doing this and if you ever needed to replace this wire you just unscrew you loosen this up pull the wire out get your new wire you put it in and then you just tighten this down and that's it. You're, you're all set. So I, this is my method that I use for uh, roof penetrations on vans. The cool thing is for like 30 bucks, you can get a whole entire kit that has you know, every size you can imagine. Uh, so these smaller ones I use for all the solar wires. Um, the bigger, more chunky ones, I'll use this for the uh, the awning, so like the Dometic awning or the Fiamma awning, um, the cable that is necessary for uh, the current of the motor coming up through is a little bit bigger gauge, so it needs a little bit bigger one of these. And then um, in Thomas's case, we put a ton of Baja Design lights up top. They also needed a chunkier hole because of uh, uh, it had a little bit more current coming through those wires. But you can buy a whole kit and then you don't have to worry about if you got the right size or not. Uh, and then last but not least, let's talk about the remainder of that order, what we ordered back here. Yeah, Daniel, that's a good point. Um, so Daniel said, uh, why not use two 500-watt solar panels to secure them to the top of the roof rack? I, it really had to do with the footprint. So the footprint was, uh, first we thought we could only do 175 because, uh, so let, let's, let me bring out that photo. Where is that photo? All right, so if we come over here to the top of the van. So the Baja design light up here, uh, we didn't know where that was gonna have to be mounted. Um, so we thought it was gonna take up the space of the front panel. And not only, okay. <laughs> Daniel, you opened up a can of worms, but a very good can of worms because I think this will help a lot of people as far as understanding what happens when you make 
one decision and it kind of has a domino effect. So kind of stay with me on this real quick. So over here in the corner, you guys can't see it, but down here in the corner is the XM radio Ford kind of satellite antenna. That had to be re relocated from up underneath the panel. So not only did it have to be relocated, but the panel selection had to make enough, had to be where we could width-wise fit it in the roof rack, but then still have enough room to run our uh, awning cables. And not only that, uh, we had to adjust the location of this max fan. So traditionally, this max fan is actually forward, about four to five inches. Uh, so what I had to do was I had to, I took this max fan and I pushed it all the way to the, uh, there's a Ford cross member right here that supports the roof of the van. So this max fan is as far to that cross member as possible. There's a kit and, uh, from the company, um, here, let's do this. So if you guys have seen, a, I think it's DIY van, they make, they make the, uh, the kit to support the fan where you would traditionally put it in the middle of the van. Not middle of the van, but the forward most section. So this is the kit that they have. So you have these two pieces. And what this does is, if you guys have never seen this before, these uh, cutouts here, they are CNC'd so that they fit perfectly up uh, to support the fan. And then what you do is you have these middle pieces that come here, and then that way, once you put this in, the fan is supported in the middle. So what I had to do is the fan had to be pushed uh, so far back here that this uh, was not an option. And what we came up with is that was the home for the fan. Thankfully, the home for the fan, the home for the solar panel, and this one from Renogy, how it fit with this satellite antenna, the awning, and the Baja Design light, because there's a support beam underneath the Baja Design light, the lit light bar. I mean, it just happened to be, I mean, there's, like by the satellite thing, there's about an eighth of an inch. By the Dometic awning, you have a you know half an inch. So our tolerances were pretty much met. There wasn't moving anything. So I know there's a long-winded answer to that, but uh, that's that's an excellent question because it uh, it's really important to make sure before you buy everything, how is it going to fit on your roof? So you know. Get a piece, get a napkin, you know, get a piece of graph paper out and just start drawing the layout. Um, uh, to be honest, the, these 50 watt panels from Renogy, uh, I, I know they existed, but I just, I couldn't believe that they, we were, I'm actually going to be able to fit these on the van and, and four of them at that. So we got really lucky with, with that. I mean, Zamp makes some other, uh, Zamp Solar makes some. I know uh, Zamp Solar is made in the USA. Um, I'm not hating on it. I just think, I think the price is a little high uh, for what you get. Um, I'd rather have a Renji panel that lasts, you know, three or four, five years. I think they have a five-year warranty on them. That's 60 bucks versus a ZAMP that's like $250, um, but has the same output. Yeah, so, yeah, that was a great question because it shows you, you know, what to think of. Um, and then also, before I move back onto the, the uh, Amazon thing, you know, you got to consider where your branch connectors are going to go, how you're going to connect them. Um, 
you know, zip tying's okay. Don't, that's completely fine. Just make sure that you are not cutting into the cable. Uh, so for example, where these uh, connections are, they're where the hard plastic is. Nothing is where the uh, um, cable is. If it is where the cable is, the zip tie is not fully tightened. Um, but the nice thing about these cables from Renogy, if you guys, if you ever buy these, look how thick the plastic is. It is significantly thick. I mean, this stuff can take a ton of abuse. So I, I don't, I'm not really worried about that. Um, but find out how you're going to feed these. So these wires are fed along this rail. They come down, they come back up, um, and then they come into here where we have our inline fuses at the back of the van. Um, that was just a great location plus uh, for access for future maintenance. You know, it's the back of the van where you can climb up with the ladder, check it out. And then you guys can see how I put them with those glands into the van. So guess what? These two wires here, that is the positive and negative of the solar coming in. Um, a pro tip is there's these, see these rain gutters on the roof? You want to have your glands on the upper part of the roof and not in this, in this valley channel because that's where the water runs. Uh, you kind of want them up on this uh, little plateau, for lack of a better word, <laughs> to kind of keep them up high, let the water drain effectively. All right, so you can see how we have this. So what we'll be doing is we'll be adding another two right behind this. So that's our secondary system. Um, but the reason, and then these other ones, this is all the, <laughs> this is all the Baja design power. Um, so those are all, and so all this is one off. So when I do the Baja design, everything's stripped and it's, it's made into its own new line. Um, okay. So that is the top of that. Let's hop over into Amazon. Guys, you're asking great questions. So if you have any more, just keep on asking. We're going to hop back over here to this just really quick. And then we're going to hop into the uh, questions that you guys have for um, from YouTube. There's a, there's a bunch of questions there that I haven't answered, so I'm going to answer them on this live stream. Um, <laughs> Good point, Daniel. Thomas, if you're watching, I don't know if... We, we do have a Wi-Fi solution that we're wiring in the van while I have it. So in a future live stream, maybe not this week, maybe next week, uh, we're installing uh, a Wi-Fi router, and then we're installing this uh, Blink security camera. A lot of cool stuff happening, but you're right. You know, maybe, but guess what? Thomas, if you're watching, uh, where's my photo? There's no, it's easy just to remove this panel and then put a star link up there. It's super easy. We'll just unplug it, no big deal. Very easy to do. Um, all right, let's talk about a couple of uh, products that you'll need. Uh, this Dicor self-leveling lap sealant. For some reason, I always thought they just had the white one, um, but this is, uh, the, it has, it's, all, it's a white bottle with a white tip, but it has the color black. I know that sounds crazy, but, so I buy this one because uh, the self-leveling lap sealant I was really big on Flex Seal, and then I found this one, and, and I like it. So that's what I use for my final sealing around the cable glands. Um, the next thing, okay, so we got the cable glands. The next thing is this company. Uh, now, after I do my calculations, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna change this. This uh, amp rating hop, popped in there. This was for the two 175 watt panels, the 32 amp, because they don't have a 30 amp. Um, so they got like a 32. So this is the isolator, our breaker for solar. So if you notice, 
um, there's a negative and a positive terminal. So for example, if you just, if there was a dead short and you just fuse the positive, uh, you know, electricity is gonna find the path of least resistance and it's just gonna go the other way uh, through the negative. So this dual pole, um, you know, once it trips, it breaks the circuit completely. And they're pretty cheap, but a lot, a lot of van uh, uh, DIYers, I don't want to say specifically, but I know I've seen a lot of YouTube videos where this is not incorporated into the system. You know, they have a main power disconnect, but they don't have, they don't have another means of it, uh, of safe, uh, safety in disconnecting the circuit. Um, keep going here. We have um, we got some ARB stuff that we're going to be installing. Uh, so here's the Renogy kit. Uh, so guys, DIYers, this is fantastic to purchase. You can purchase it in a couple different options. You got a 100 watt kit, 200 watt, and then a 400 watt system. Uh, but each kit comes with your brackets to mount to the solar panels, uh, your leads to go directly to the battery, and then your uh, branch adapters over here. And again, uh, these cables, I mean, it says they got a 25-year lifespan. I believe it. I mean, this, these, uh, for, they're good value. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and then we have uh, this Blue Seas disconnect switch. Again, this is a little overkill, but we are operating off of aesthetics as well. So we want everything to look very good and professional and we want it to match our other disconnect switch. Now these switches, these big ones, they have this relief cut in them. And that relief allows us to, uh, to uh, mount it in the wood. And then that way you don't see, it looks, uh, as the wood cut out is just a circle and it goes through it. Um, but the reason we have to use these big chunky ones, yeah, that's right, Daniel. They use a single pole, not a double pole. So if, you know, it'll, it might break the circuit, but then it's just going to come back down the, the negative side. So, yeah. Yeah, you want, the, you want both the negative and the positive disconnected at the same time. Um, you don't want to have the negative grounded to the van and the positive, the only thing that's breaking the circuit. Uh, because uh, with solar panels, they can have dead shorts within the panel themselves. So if you think about it, you have a dead short possibility with the panel, then you have a dead short with the, the wiring. So depending on your current that you're pushing through the system uh, and the, the gauge of the wire, it may be necessary to do an inline fuse um, excellent question because guess what? This uh, explorers.life was a video that I was going to show you guys. Um, so check out his video. It's uh, how to wire different size sizes of camper solar panels together. Effects of mismatched solar panels. Um, so he goes into depth. He's got his own printed out charts and stuff like that. And uh, visually he really teaches you... Um, a great way to understand it. Um, and then he also has a video over here, how to fuse a solar panel array. And in this video, oh, you can't see it, there we go. Uh, how to fuse a solar panel array. So that video as well would be the follow-up to that. So that way um, you're mitigating the dead short at the panel to uh, the line, the solar, power lines going into your van so those lines are actually fused with this so you'll have one of these and this, this all depends on your current um, and he'll explain in that video uh, but you'll have this is a fuse an inline fuse and essentially what you can do is in your branch adapter this will snap in and so if this was positive and positive this would be your, your fused positive going out. Uh, this would be going into your van. And then when you go into your van, 
you're going to have the dual pole going into your van. And then the output of this, uh, I don't have it on the table, but that would go into your, uh, uh, your, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here. You're like positive negative bus bar, uh, which in our case, we're using the, um, the Lynx distributor. So we're using the Lynx distributor. Um, and I love the Lynx distributor. Not affiliated or sponsored or anything like that, but I love them because it's just such a compact way to manage uh, the, your incoming power and then f uh, fusing that properly. So we would have it come into here, uh, fused and then, dis then distributed. All right, almost to the answering your guys' questions. Let me just do this one more thing to kind of complete this video. Let me back up here. Um, actually, that's it. The last thing, I mean, we'll use, we'll talk about this in a future stream, is this, uh, this Blink uh, Mini hooking up this uh, system to uh, the Wi-Fi. So it'll be an in van security system so if you guys have any questions on that uh, really all i'm doing is i'm kind of the mad scientist uh teaching you guys how to take uh different like book boost or voltage um changing voltages so like 12 volts to 15 volts or like 12 volts to 15 volts but then like specifically three amps for a certain uh power supply so what you can do is you can kind of uh, engineer your own, um, for example, if something runs off a USB-C, you can get the raw USB-C cable in, so you can wire it into this to get your proper voltage. And the reason we're doing this is we're trying to eliminate everything in the van uh, that is being ran off of the inverter. Um, so, for example, things that Thomas wants to run, that has, he has been running, um, that we want to, that are not necessary to be charged by an inverter. So, anything like, uh, like a MacBook or cell, cell phone, you know, heated blanket, uh, Wi-Fi router, um, the Blink camera. All this stuff is, is so low voltage that it's not, it's not necessary to... Do, turn on a 3000 watt inverter and then power, you know, uh, like a 15 volt device. Uh
All right, we're back. Daniel, thank you for the no sound. I, uh, my wireless lapel died for some reason. Let me pull this off. All right, guys. This, this microphone's the, be the better one anyway. We're, so we're not walking around anymore. How about that? Okay, let's get back into it. We're on Amazon. And, okay. We're back. Yeah, give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can hear the audio. It was coming through good. All right. Last but not least, what was, what was the last thing I wanted to show you guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the questions. Yeah, give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can hear the sound, if we're back sound-wise. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm on the Van Builder channel, Van Builder HQ, and I'm going through the comments here. Um, let me see if I can uh, get this. I'm going to make sure that I'm not <laughs> showing you guys anything that you should not see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, we can, we can go live. That's okay. like this. These are UL listed plugs. So they have a plug here. Um, and then at the end, they have this tip. Now just use this for reference. You can get all kinds of different cables. Um, but for example, if you ignore the end, um, these cables, they're you know made for outdoors. They're extremely tough. And this is a, uh, let's see what gauge this is. Yeah, it's a 14 gauge wire, which is really good. And if you're doing any type of AC, uh, if you're doing any type of, uh, you know, high amperage through the roof wire, instead of buying, you know, hundreds of feet of wire, you can just go buy this. Uh, this is probably, I don't know, it's probably, you know, 10 feet, 15 feet of cable. And you can just quickly, um, like I use that for the Dometic, on Dometic awning, or I will splice it and wire it into a Baja Design Light and just have that channel. That way I'm not um, going through hundreds of feet of, of hundreds of feet of cable to go through the roof of the van. And then with
talking about solar power, adding an additional system. Uh, you'll be seeing footage of this being put into Thomas's van over the next few weeks. And then we will kind of show you how we'll do a follow up with uh, the power system, how everything is integrated. Uh, but I know a lot of people are planning their systems out and they're just kind of wondering, you know, what stuff on Amazon. Uh, some people have asked me for Amazon links. So this video is kind of just, this stuff came in today so or yesterday. And I just wanted to make sure that when it comes in, it's kind of in the same time that you guys are seeing it. But yeah, if you guys any, if you have any questions uh, as far as, you know, topics you'd like to see discussed in future live streams, put that in the comments below. I always check the comments and respond to them. So put those in the comments. Uh, once again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to go ahead and sign off and we will see you in the next live stream.